Joe Bethencourt was born in El Paso, Texas, into a military family that traveled frequently. With his mother and grandfather having both been born in Arizona, Joe spent every Christmas here absorbing his mother's ragtime piano along with his grandfather's fiddle. And uh, mom's father uh, was a fine Ozark Mountain uh, fiddle player. And he could, he could play fiddle tunes for hours. And I was fascinated by that. When Joe was about nine, he was sitting in with his grandfather who was playing the fiddle. He asked him if he could play the fiddle also. His grandfather then dug out an old banjo from a closet, handing it to Joe while stating, here, play this, we need more banjo players. The family returned to Arizona in 1961 and Joe attended North High School. I came, came back here uh, to find that uh, folk music uh, was this huge fad thing and that I was the only guy in high school who uh, knew how to play the banjo. Okay, <laughs> this means I get babes, and it's true. <laughs> it wasn't long before Joe was sitting in with mariachi, bluegrass, country, and folk music bands, sneaking into nightclubs such as JD's. I first moved to uh, Arizona. I came from Southern California where we had a really great music scene in the late 60s there. And I came here and I asked around, I said, who are your very best players? And Joe's name was always mentioned as one of the top people. It was at the lumber mill during an open mic that Joe encountered John Denver. At the time, my, uh, uh, my uh, speech impediment was very bad. Uh, and uh, so I managed to make it through a couple of songs with, you know, some some dialogue. And uh, I, he came off stage, and the manager or the owner, I ain't sure really what he was there, uh, informed me that that I would obviously uh, never make it. I had uh, no talent, and uh, and I he should quit. John, John uh, proceeded to come unhinged on him, very quietly, very politely. And then he turned uh, to me and he said, maybe you can't speak real well, but you can play the snot out of those guitars and banjos. Let them speak for you. Living in Hollywood in the late 60s and working as a studio musician, Joe's first Billboard magazine four-star album, the Joe Bethencourt String Concert, was released. Returning to Arizona, Joe quickly became the house band at Funny Fellows. The Funny Fellows gig was just famous. Everybody went there. I mean, people from Mesa drove all the way to the west side to see him do this thing. And as I recall, he had all these instruments on the wall behind him. And after every song, he'd put that instrument back and then he'd stand there and say, let's see, what should I play? How about the medieval lute? And he'd play that for a while and he'd put it back. He'd say, how about the 12-string guitar? Or how about a sitar? And, and it, was, it was the most entertaining show I think I'd ever seen one guy do. Along with hosting his radio show, Folk Music Occasional on KDKB with Bill Compton, he appeared as a regular on the Wallace and Ladmo show. Joe's list of accomplishments as a husband, father, producer, songwriter, entertainer, artist, musician, and teacher proves that Joe is one of Arizona's finest. <laughs> ¶¶